God had a wife known as Asherah, the Queen of Heaven, but she was removed from the Bible. The Queen of Heaven was a powerful goddess, but she became hated by God, who declared that those who worshipped her should be burned and destroyed by his anger and fury. Who was Asherah, Queen of Heaven and the wife of God? Why did God come to hate her and why was she removed from the Bible? What we're going to talk about is absolutely insane and shows just how far this world has gone to twist our society into a patriarchy. Asherah was a powerful matriarchal goddess who represented nature and femininity. She was worshipped under every green tree and in the temple and the forest groves, and her image was carved from wood. However, Asherah, the queen of heaven, and the matriarchal figure of femininity would soon draw the wrath of her husband, the patriarchal and savage Yahweh. Everything that you've been told about God in the Bible, it's been a lie. Christianity and the Abrahamic religions in general, they're monotheistic religions, meaning that there's only one God, that God being Yahweh. However, when early scripture was being written, the Israelite religion was actually polytheistic, meaning they believed in many gods. And when we look at the history of the religions that influenced the scriptures, specifically the Canaanite religion, we discover that Yahweh was just one of many gods, including El Elyon, the Most High God, and Asherah, Queen of Heaven. When what would become the first book of the Bible, Genesis, was written, the God referred to wasn't originally Yahweh. In fact, it wasn't just one God, but multiple gods, two of them being El Elyon, the Most High God, and Asherah, the Queen of Heaven. Now, at this point, it's actually El Elyon and Asherah that are husband and wife. Now, if you open a Bible right now to Genesis 1, 26 through 27, you'll see that it says, then God said, let us make humanity in our image to resemble us. Male and female, God created them. So you'll notice two striking details. First, God says to make humanity in our image to resemble us. Now this makes no sense if there's supposedly only one God, and the Trinity doesn't explain this since the Trinity wasn't officially established until the Council of Nicaea hundreds of years later. Second, after saying humanity will be created to resemble us, he creates the male and female. Now this makes no sense according to what would become the orthodox narrative, but it makes perfect sense when you realize this book was written when multiple gods were worshipped, including Asherah the mother goddess. That's why they were created male and female. Now here's where things start to get insane. At this time, El Elyon was worshipped along with other gods, including his wife, Asherah, the Queen of Heaven. But beginning in Exodus, El Elyon is replaced by Yahweh, who would become the monotheistic god of Christianity and Abrahamism in general. Yahweh was a savage war god, and there are many verses in the Bible that just state this outright. He's a god of destruction and retribution. The Abrahamic religions claim that he's a god of peace and love, but if you read the Bible, you'll see he causes the deaths of all the firstborn children in Egypt, accepts a burnt virgin sacrifice, and destroys countless innocent men, women, and children. I don't know if it's just me, but that doesn't sound like a god of peace and love. When we look at the Hebrew texts, we can see how the religion evolved. Now, originally, the scriptures, they describe a religion of many gods, but as the scriptures go on and the religion evolves over time, more emphasis begins to be placed on Yahweh, and many people start worshiping Asherah as the wife of Yahweh instead of El Elyon. And Yahweh and Asherah are even invoked together for protection. But even this doesn't last because soon Yahweh declares himself the one true God, turning on all the other gods, including his wife Asherah. Ultimately, the existence of the other gods is outright denied. And we can see that scriptures began in a polytheistic way, then evolved to convince believers that Yahweh was the most powerful of the gods, then eventually phased out the other gods entirely and became monotheistic. Now, I've done an entire video describing this, but let's look at how Asherah, the queen of heaven, was erased from the Bible. Yahweh is an extreme patriarchal figure, and no doubt Asherah, being a powerful matriarchal figure, was a very strong threat. Multiple books in the Bible, particularly Hosea, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, 
blame goddess religions for making Yahweh jealous, and this jealousy being the reason he allowed the destruction of Israel. Throughout the Bible, attempts are made to portray goddess religions in a negative light by associating them with prostitution. Not that there's anything negative about that. But in actuality, it's highly likely that sexual and fertility rights were held in honor centering around women of power and influence. In fact, the Hebrew word gadishtu is typically translated as temple prostitutes, but it literally means priestess. But the suppression of goddess religions and Asherah gets a lot worse. The name Asherah appears 40 times in the Hebrew Bible, but not at all in the English translation, the King James Bible. Instead, her name was translated as groves of trees. This means the average English reader of the Bible wouldn't have read her name for more than 400 years. All that made it in were a handful of references to a nameless queen of heaven in verses where Yahweh is ordering the destructions of her shrines, cursing and obliterating those who worship her and causing the desolation of the people and lands associated with her. Asherah, the Queen of Heaven, was a powerful archetype of feminine empowerment. She was the mother goddess, a comforter and protector associated with trees, groves, and forests, nature of all kinds, and a symbol of honored sexuality. Unfortunately, it became God the Father's mission to destroy his wife, the mother goddess. Asherah wasn't accidentally lost to history. She was deliberately destroyed by patriarchal monotheists through the tearing down of her temples, destruction of her images, and the misrepresentation of her rights. Her stories were rewritten and ultimately her name was forgotten. All this has influenced our culture, and is it any wonder why our world is in the imbalanced, patriarchal, crazy state that it is today? It's time for the resurgence of the divine feminine and the kindling of the fires of retribution for the mother goddess. So let's step out of the dark ages of this sexist society and into the light of rational equal opportunity for all. So tell me your thoughts in the comments, make sure that you like and subscribe, and if you want to know more about Yahweh's dark rise to power and all the evidence for it in the Bible, watch my video called God is Actually a War God. If you've ever gotten something or learned something from my videos, consider supporting on Patreon. I help you out, you help me out, and we can help the world out. You'll also get access to our weekly secret live streams and our hidden Discord server, The Citadel. My name is Morg, and I am Hyperion. Hail, Nutera.